Inside the $4 million Silicon Valley home where Sam Bigman Freed is under house arrest, meaning he's free from jail, but not really free. Sam Bigman Freed is staying at mom and dad's while spending his time under house arrest following a record breaking $250 million bond. Now, you might be wondering, well, I mean, if he got a $250 million bond, how on earth did he actually get out of that? Well, typically, if you are arrested or whatever, and you end up, ha- you're given like a, like a bond, you can typically go through like a bail bondsman and pay 10% of the listed bond. So, 250 times... Point one zero. So basically, he paid $25 million. Now, what's interesting, by doing that, you have to put things up for collateral of good value. But also, what's interesting is that if you flee or if you don't go to the court date that you're supposed to go to, whoever put up that collateral loses it no matter what. So, it's a pretty crazy thing. But also, you got to think about it too. It's like, who gave him the money, right? That ain't a small amount of money. So, the home. A cozy residence on the edge of Stanford University's campus in Palo Alto, California. Joseph Bankman and Barbara Freed, who are Stanford law professors, purchased the home in 1992 for about $700,000, some $1.5 million in today's dollars, records show, and the home is estimated to be worth more than $4 million today. Made up of four bedrooms and three baths, the home briefly hit the rental market in June 2013 for nearly $14,000 per month. And by the end of the year, the home was up for rent, asking a slightly less $12,000 a month and it was taken off the rental market in January 2014. Standing on nearly a one-acre lot, the home was built in 1917 and is considered part of the Palo Alto Stanford heritage dedicated to the preservation of Palo Alto's historic buildings. Now, the thing that is also interesting, right? The police department probably needs to have, like, people kind of staked out around his property. One, because he might actually flee. But two, people now know where he exactly lives and he's in the States. That's a very scary situation for someone that scammed potentially millions of people. Like, hey, if you scam like millions of people of literally potentially all of their money because you use their money as like your personal wallet yeah it probably ain't going to be good but also it looks like a pretty nice house not going to lie let's see living room features a fireplace updated kitchen yeah okay wall to wall windows for the most sunlight Study with built-in bookshelves. Like, it looks like a pretty nice place, right? Now, for for $4 million, eh, I probably wouldn't spend that type of money. So, spanning some 3,000 square feet, features include a dining room with a white brick fireplace, an updated kitchen with an expansive island, a large living area also with a fireplace, and walls of windows. The outdoors are surrounded by palm trees, a gated pool, and expansive lawn. American novelist David Levitt grew up in the house just before the Bankman Freeds took over. U.S. District Judge Gabriel Gorenstein signed off on the deal Thursday, allowing the disgraced FTX founder and ex-CEO to leave New York for his home state. Bankman Freed, 30, who left his Bahamian oasis on extradition, is staring down a slew of charges which carry a sentence of up to 115 years. Whew. The entrepreneur is accused of wire fraud, securities fraud, conspiracy, money laundering, and campaign finance violations, and federal charging documents accuse him of defrauding investors out of a whopping 1.8 
billion dollars. And while awaiting a federal trial, the fallen crypto king will be fitted with an ankle monitor, which is smart because that does prevent him from fleeing pretty much. But at the same time, you still probably need to like have a police officer out there to keep an eye because you don't want him to be Epstein. So let's check out some of these comments. What a joke. I agree. I wonder if the parents will lose their home or lose this home to pay their son's legal bills or their own for that matter. They lose it if he runs, that's all. So I guess his parents put up some of the collateral and use that house. In only five weeks, but okay, this is like a some scam thing, okay. Good. Can we order stuff off the menu against him now or not yet? You think if his name was Leroy Brown? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Better get used to those bars, kid. Four million doesn't buy you much in Palo Alto. Hey, this is the crazy thing, right? For four million dollars in the most places in America, you could literally buy a mega mansion, right? But in California, that like barely buys you a nice house. Like, isn't that kind of crazy when you really think about it? Like, there's places I think in, I don't know, Florida, Tennessee. Virginia, Texas, probably Texas in some places where you could probably spend like 600 grand and have like over 7,000 square feet on like multiple acres. Like you could buy a lot of property depending on the location, which kind of like surprises me, right? It's like, wow. Why do people choose to live in California when it's so expensive? And you got to be making so much money to simply live an okay life there. Let's see. This is house arrest. What do I have to do to get a house like that? Spend basically your whole lifetime in school teaching students what you're not doing. Yeah, so teach a standard law for 20-something years. Where does this psychotic slimeball slug felon get $250 million for bail? He is broke. Well, here is the thing. He didn't actually do it with $250 million. Like I mentioned, it's really more like 10% if he goes through like a bail bondsman, which is $25 million, which if you basically put like some of the home as like equity and then like guarantors of basically apparently wealthy individuals that backed him as well who they are no idea but you could end up doing it it's just it's kind of weird because he's openly said that his bank account is basically like only a hundred thousand dollars if that so the fact that there's still people out there that want to back him up is kind of crazy to me. Now, the thing is, I completely understand the parents wanting to help him. One, because he technically gave them basically millions of dollars in real estate. But two, they're his parents, right? Parents tend to have like a special love for their kid if they're good parents. Whether they're good people or not, that's a whole other thing. But hey, like if your parent is willing to help you out and when you do something stupid, you know, you can't really judge too much the parent for being a parent, right? Let's see. This guy is like literally the definition of a flight risk. True, but he does have that ankle monitor. So another article stated his bond was secured by equity in his family home and by signatures of his parents and two other individuals with considerable assets. Who are these two other individuals? See, yeah, I don't know who they are, but they got to have a lot of money. Yeah, it's a 10% of 250.
This is a total disgrace. He should be in jail like anyone else until his hearing in front of the judge. But again, because he has money, not his, he gets bond which shows two different justices. And that's the thing. If you got a lot of money, the legal system tends to go a little bit easier in your way. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to go your way, but it's more likely to be nudged closer to your path. I don't think he's going anywhere but jail. I think he's going to go to jail as well, but will he last there? I don't know. Feel free to give your thoughts on this. If you want to learn how I got out of debt or how to get out of debt, go down below or go to 40 com. if you want to learn how to actually get out of debt and master your money. Stay tuned for more financial commentary.